Under the years of George Bush, after the U.S. invasion of both Afghanistan and Iraq, we started hearing about people being picked up sometimes in the battlefield and sometimes not even in the battlefield with a bounty on their heads, like $5,000 or $10,000 that were given to people who would uh, report somebody that was then picked up. So this became a money-making thing where um, men were picked up in these various countries, oftentimes having nothing to do with the battle and flown to Guantanamo. And somebody would get $5,000 for that person. It was really crazy. And there were hundreds and hundreds of people who were being shipped off to this remote island in Cuba and kept out of uh, sight, not given charges, not given a uh, right to any kind of due process. And we also heard about torture, both when they were captured and interrogated when they got to Guantanamo. And so Code Pink started doing a campaign, hooking up with other people in the United States that were horrified about this. For 19 years, a coalition of activists have stood outside the White House on January 11th, calling for Guantanamo to be closed. What does in the name of freedom mean? They've done that outside the White House. They've done it in cities across America. It's even been done in countries across the world. Code Pink went to Guantanamo. Um, Medea Benjamin, Anne Wright, Cindy Sheehan, myself, we went outside Guantanamo with family members of those held inside calling for the closure in 2007. This has gone on far too long. It should never have happened. And we had a campaign around torture itself where we would go into Congress and simulate waterboarding, just like we did in front of the White House. And then we found out that there were prisoners in Guantanamo who were staging hunger strikes, and we joined them in hunger strikes in the United States. And then we found out that they were force feeding people in Guantanamo. And so we simulated force feeding, which is really another form of torture, in front of the White House. So we started uh, protesting, and then we decided that one of the things that, that we would do would, was we would fast in solidarity with the, uh, with the men and let them know that we were taking upon ourselves the carrying of that, of that burden. People came from all over the country for always around the 11th of January because that was the day that it was open, that Guantanamo was open, January 11th, 2002. And, um, and so not only did people come from around the country, but they also came from other parts of the world. 40 men remain in Guantanamo until today. This is 19 years after its opening. They are all Muslim. 10 have already been cleared to leave and are still being held. We need to stand up and say, close this inhumane, torturous place. Tell Biden, this must end. There is a new film that's out this week, The Mauritanian about Mohamedou al-Salahi. This film exposes the violence of the US government to innocent men, over 900 of them, held in Guantanamo Bay. We're using the launch of this film to call yet again on those in Washington DC, and this time President Biden, to finally close Guantanamo, a shame on the United States of America.
that I'm encouraging my congressmen and my senators and, uh, and, and our president to be bold. Um, it's not a time for temerity. It's not a time for cautious strategizing. It's a time for being bold, for being inspiring. Please call on President Biden to close Guantanamo and join us on March 6th for a Q&A after watching the Mauritanian with Mohamedou al Salahi and Nancy Hollander, his attorney, played by Jodie Foster in the film. We hope you can join us. We hope you can act now. Thank you and onward to peace. I'm a miracle, am I a miracle? It don't stop.